Welcome! My name is Marcin Lewandowski and you're watching the viewfinder on Adorama TV. In this episode, I'll try to convince you to switch your camera to manual setting for the first time through a little bit better understanding of the correlation between the aperture, shutter speed and ISO settings. You might ask, why bother with manual exposure mode if today's cameras are capable of reliably calculating correct exposure? Well, even cameras from 20, 30 or more years ago could do that. So what is correct exposure and how does a camera make that decision? Without going into too much detail, in order to determine exposure, the camera looks for an average value between dark and light areas within the frame. Based on this information, the camera sets an average value between the shutter speed, aperture and the ISO and this is when we might want to step in. Let's start with the most basic connection in photography, which is shutter speed and aperture. There are four variables here that we need to take into account. One, the slower the shutter speed, the longer it remains open, the brighter the image. But if the duration is too long, the images might become blurry, which can be naturally used to our advantage, for example, panning. The faster the shutter speed, the shorter duration it remains open. This means that less light comes in, therefore, the image becomes darker, but the image will also be sharper. Think sports photography. Three, the lower the aperture number, the brighter the image, but the shallower the focus depth is. This is called depth of field. And four, the higher the aperture number, the darker the image, but this gives better depth of field. The so-called auto mode is usually a good start for the manual game. A huge advantage of digital photography over film is that we can immediately see not only an image we just took, but also all the camera settings that were used and quickly adjust to our taste. Keeping in mind the four points I just mentioned, feel free to tweak the image a bit, not just for the accurate exposure, but change it into something that you like. Remember, in order to keep balance in the exposure, each time the shutter speed is changed, change the aperture in the opposite direction and vice versa. Do the same to the shutter speed too if changing the aperture. Our last variable in the manual equation is ISO or ISO as someone pointed out to me. This setting is responsible for sensitivity of the camera sensor to light and affects both the shutter speed and aperture. Basically, the higher the ISO number, the brighter our image becomes at a cost of losing details and becoming more grainy. The lower the ISO, the darker the image, but also the smoother the details. I know it's quite a lot of info for such short video, but fortunately, cameras won't break from trying different settings and with a little bit of patience and will to experiment, we can learn a whole lot about our camera and how different settings affect the final image. So. Enjoy a bit of freedom to make all your own decisions. I hope you found today's episode interesting. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more and check out the Adorama Learning Center for some good tips and tutorials. This was Marcin Lewandowski for Adorama TV. See you soon.